Welcome back to the Coding Circus. Today, what we're going to talk about is something called a GUI, Graphical User Interface. In Vizard, the way this uh, is formatted, it's a 2D overlay on top of the 3D world. Now, typically, you would not use a GUI if you had the headsets on. If you're using the VR headset, the GUI doesn't really work. It really is only for when you're in the desktop version. So it's kind of going to separate the line between your 3D game like Fortnite, where you're moving around in the keyboard, and versus a full immersive VR world where um, you have your, your GUI is basically objects in the world. So really that's the difference between this. And it's pretty easy to, to add. It's, it's not all that difficult. Um, it's really just a couple methods that we're calling and adding in parameters. So let's dive right in and take a look. Okay. So we're going to have to import some things. Um, we have our normal imports. And then we're going to import vizinfo, which we've seen before. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about it today. And then we're going to also have some other menus that we're going to import. But for now, I'm going to just also add in um, the viz shape because we're going to use that. We'll add in the other imports in a minute. Okay, so let's add in our world. And I'm going to do a little bit of a different world this time. I'm going to add in just a, a plain world with just a ground surface because we're not going to be doing anything really in the rest of the world. Everything's going to be on that 2D screen. So I'm going to add in my info panel. And remember, for our info panel, it, it takes the text default from whatever comment is up here. And it will put that in the info panel. So when I run this, this text sits right here in the info panel. So that's an easy way to add those instructions. But the info panel can do more than that. I can add, let's say, a button to my info panel. And I'm going to call it button. And I'm using this command here, info.addLabelItem. I'm going to put a text that goes along with the button. And then I'm going to call the command viz.addButton. And that will actually add the button to the panel with the text push me. So when I run this, you can see now we have a button that we can push. Except it doesn't do anything. Just because we added the button doesn't mean we've given it some kind of action. So we're going to use uh, the tasks that we looked at before um, in order to control all of these different GUI items. Because if you don't add tasks to them, then those items aren't going to do anything. Uh, let me add in a couple other things. They're all going to be info add label, but they're going to be different kinds of labels that we add. So we can add in a slider, and it's with viz.add slider. We can add in a checkbox. We can add in a text box that we can type into. Uh, I'm going to add another button to go along with that text box. And then we can add a drop down list. So we have all these things added to our label. And we can see now we have our a pretty robust info label there. OK. Let's also add in a slider that's not in the info bar. So you don't have to add things. You can add any one of these things, the text, the checkbox, the, um, the slider, all of them outside the info box just by using that add progress bar and then setting the position of the progress bar somewhere on the screen. So we don't have to use um, the slider. Uh, or the progress bar or the text box inside the info box, we can put it somewhere else. Uh, so I didn't put a progress bar inside of my info box. This is something different. So I'm going to put that and relaunch. And notice it puts the text how much inside my progress bar here. So this would be like a loading bar. I can change the value. And I'll show you how to get all that information in a second. Okay. 
So let's add in some functionality to handle the events. So the first functionality I'm going to add is a method that is going to print the value that the slider is at. I have to do some math here. So the slider is going to send a value uh, and it's going to be a position. I'm going to convert it to a percentage by multiplying it by 100 because it's going to be a value between 0 and 1. So I'm going to multiply it by 100, add a percentage sign, um, get rid of the decimals by casting it as an integer and converting it to a string. So it's now just going to say a percentage. And I'm going to set the progress bar to the same value as the slider. So I'm going to do my progress bar dot set its position. Now we just got to get an action. So remember one way we did actions is with the viz act command. And viz act has built in actions and one of them is on slider. So when the slider changes, remember we have on keyboard, this is on slider. When the slider changes, we're going to call, um, when this slider changes, the one that's called my slider, we're going to call the method slider changed. So let's take a look at that and see what happens. So now when we look at it, I change the slider, we can see the progress bar is moving, but also on the screen, I'm getting a printout of the percentage of which we are at on the slider. So they're linked together. Now, the progress bar can still be used independently, it's not, but it doesn't have any effect. Uh, we, if you were doing a real game, you want, might want to make it so the person can't click that and change that. So that's one way, just a reminder of how to add in some events. Uh, the on slider change is one of them. Now, I'm also going to say the progress bar could change. Funny enough, though, the action is still on slider. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. There we go. When the progress bar changes, I'm going to add a method that prints to the screen just the value of the progress bar, but the action that gets triggered when the progress bar changes is an on slider action. And the difference is I'm going to tell the on slider action to do what to do with if that thing is my progress bar. So it treats the slider and the progress bar effectively as the same kind of object. So now I'm going to run this. And now I'm going to change my slider and notice the slider is now saying the value. But when I change the progress bar, the progress bar changes and tells me the value. So now I've, I've separated those two tests. If I change the progress bar, I get the number for the progress bar. If I change the slider, I get the number for the slider. But I also affect the progress bar. So we can kind of start linking these things together and making some choices about what we do with our different activities once we've created them. How about our button? Now. When we say button, button is loose because it includes a checkbox. So the checkbox could be up or down, basically print checked or unchecked, and a button could be up or down, basically pressed or unpressed. The computer um, wizard treats them exactly the same. So I'm going to add a callback event this time. that on the button event, I'm going to call the on button method. And that's going to take care of the checkbox. It's going to take care of the button, whether it's up or down, and it's going to take care of my submit button. And when I press my submit button, if the, it's the submit button that's down, I'm going to get, get the text from the text box, textbox.get, and print it. And then I'm also going to clear out what is ever in the text box. Now notice you've seen these text commands before when we dealt with 3D text and with 2D text. The 2D text was the text on the screen. So the text box is really 
uh, a variation of the text on the screen. It has the same kinds of methods where we can get and messages and uh, print messages in the box. So if the button pressed is the submit button, we're going to print the text. If the button is the uh, button that doesn't have anything with it, we're just going to say up or down. And if it's a checkbox, we're going to say checked or unchecked. You could later on decide uh, what you wanted each of those to do. Maybe they're more complicated uh, and, they, and they did different things other than just print stuff on the screen. If you're a user, so now we're going to push the button and we can see pressed and up. My slider still works. Checkbox, checked, unchecked. I can type in the text box, hello world, and then submit it. And it says hello world. And of course, I still have my selection box, which we have to look at. So let's go and take a look at that next. So our drop down list, I'm going to populate it by adding items to the list. And then I'm going to do another callback. So let's go and look at that because it's separate than a button. So I'm going to add items, item one, item two, item three. It's basically a list that we're adding items. We could always append them later on, just like we could append any other list. And I'm going to add a cause back, a callback event for when the list event occurs. And the name of the event is going to be on list. And if the object is my drop list, I'm going to print out the selection uh, and get it from the object that's passed to the method. And it's going to be the new SEL command that tells me what was selected from my drop down list. So here's my drop down list. When I select it, prints out that I selected selection one. Two, zero, and we have, so now we have our fully functional info panel. So it, I would keep this project, and uh, it's not something you memorize. It's like, hey, I want to go and add an info panel and add that as a GUI. Let me go back. I want to do a checkbox, or I want to do a button. I want to submit text. All that code lives in this little project here. So I would definitely kind of make a note of that, that this is where I would go to look for that information. Now, there is a different kind of GUI that we could add. It's called a menu. And we have to import a new class to do that called VizMenu. And it has very similar objects. It has um, text boxes and drop down lists and all that kind of thing. But we can. directly control uh, objects with it, just like we, we could actually directly control the same kind of objects with our um, info menu. But this is just another example. And it looks different. So first, we can tell the computer, once we've created it, menu.addMenu, vizmenu.add, where we want to put it. So I'm going to align it to the center. and. Um, I'm going to add two dimensional pop outs for my menu called appearance. And then I'm going to add a menu item for my first ball, ball one. So we're going to add an item to one of my pop downs. Okay, so there's ball one. And then I'm going to add a drop list to one of my pop downs. So again, add, but this time it's a drop list. It's not just doing a menu add. And then um, I'm going to add a sub menu under ball one. So I need to say ball one menu dot add. So I'm going to add in all these different options for my ball. There we go. I want to be able to change the color. Uh, and then in that color menu, I'm going to choose red, white, or blue. And those are going to be radio buttons. 
So I'm going to do viz.radio. It's going to make more sense when you actually see it run. And then I'm going to also add in a slider to my menu. So ball one menu dot add viz slider. And that adds a slider and it's going to be called size. So when I run this, you'll see my menu appears across the top as a drop down menu. It's called the appearance menu. Then I have my ball one menu. And then I have a pop out from color, red, white, or blue. And then I have my slider. So we're structuring one thing within another. So if you want this kind of menu versus this kind of menu, uh, you would use the viz menu feature in order to get this kind of menu. Let's add in um, OK, so you can do the same kinds of callbacks for all these things uh, when the radio button changes or when the slider changes. It's all the same kinds of callbacks for different events in our menu that we saw in our um, info menu. OK, let's add in another kind of menu. This is called a configuration menu. So we're going to have to import that viz config just another kind of menu lots of options when you're doing a graphical user interface here this is not even going to be all of them I'm going to show you several of them but we're not even going to get through every possible way but I think the ones that we're showing you are the most important and I'm going to add in a ball that I can configure. So we're going to add in a sphere that we're going to be able to configure and put that in the space. So when we run this, we'll see that we have our ball just kind of sitting there in the space. You can see it there. And our two menus. And now I'm going to create a configuration for the ball. And the way I do that. is I say um, this config dot basic configurable ball. Now, here's the thing. In order to actually see the configuration menu, I have to press F12 on my keyboard. Then I'm going to be able to see the configuration menu once I put stuff in it. So I'm going to add an item and call it uh, visible to my configuration menu. Uh, it's either going to be true or false. I'm going to add in an alpha channel. Basically co uh, changes the transparency. And I'm going to add in a radio button that lets me change the color. Okay, so now I've added those options to my menu. Nothing's going to happen yet because other than different, um, different than other menu systems, I have to register this in the configuration menu using vizconfig.register. So I'm going to register BC, which is this thing that is a basic configuration of a ball and has those different values for the ball. So now when I run it, now when I press F12, I get my configuration for my ball. And it's going to do all those things I said that I wanted to do. I can change the alpha. I can change the color like that and make it visible or invisible. So I can change all those effects of that ball just by adding in this configuration menu and setting these different properties. Um, for whether or not the ball is visible or invisible, uh, the alpha range from 0 to 1, and then the color, which is going to be white, red, or blue, and assigning it to the ball color. So they ha if you look at the way this, this fits, the first part of it is the, um, the ball's current state, so the current color. 
and then we're going to say where we're going to assign it. So we're going to assign the color to ball.color. And we're going to assign um, the ball's alpha between 0 and 1 to uh, the alpha of the ball. OK, so that's a configuration menu. Uh, we got one more menu here that we're going to look at in this lesson. It's, it's called a, a dialog menu. I'm not crazy with the fact that they call it a dialog menu because there are other kinds of dialog menus that are like pop-up dialog menus that you're probably used to. So we're going to import viz dialog. And I'm going to add in a ticker dialog. And I'm going to add two more components to it. P1, P2, P3. One's going to be circle, one's going to be a crosshair, one's going to be um, a border. And I'm setting up the units, I'm setting up the range, I'm saying it's editable, and um, it's background. So those are those three things. Then I need to say where the panel's going to be. Top right. And then I need to say where the circle, crosshairs, uh, border, and checkbox, slider, I can add a movie to it, are all going to be in my panel here. A whole bunch of crazy stuff. So we're going to add a circle panel, a crosshair, a border, a checkbox. But notice the circle is going to go with P, um, P1, crosshair P2, border P3. Um, I can have a checkbox, which is a viz.at checkbox, a slider, which is a viz.at slider, and then a movie, which is going to be on that quad that we talked about before in uh, the textures. And then finally, you have to link the top right to my dialog panel. And I give it an offset, negative 20 by negative 20 by 0. And we can see now we have this, this panel here, which is kind of like the info panel in that um, it, it's the same kind of look of it, but it has these multiple windows that all would do different things. And again, I would use callbacks and um, um, in events in order to capture that data and affect something in my program. So it's just a kind of a more complicated info screen if you think about it that way. OK, so that's the dialogue. Not the dialogue that I like. There is another kind of dialogue. But what we're going to do is we're going to save that for the next video, a more advanced dialogues. So that's it for today, and I will see you next time.